The other type of subprogram we can use in VHDL is procedures. So procedures are uh, very similar to functions in a lot of ways. Uh, they contain sequential statements. They can be called uh, within concurrent code or within sequential code. Um, uh, they pretty much function the same way. There are two differences between functions and procedures. First, procedures can use uh, signal assignments. And the second difference is that procedures can have uh, arguments that are of input, output, or in-out direction. So when we talked about functions, we had uh, arguments that were always of the input direction. You could state, state that, but you didn't need to. With procedures, you can have uh, input or output direction arguments. Uh, and one corollary of this is that procedures don't have a return value, but in fact, they can have multiple return values through their arguments. So uh, we see here an example of a, a procedure called batch calculate. And um, again, uh, we, have, we can have uh, local variable declarations, in this case, local signal declarations. But the main thing to notice is that when we have uh, the list of arguments, you have to define a direction. So um, you have to define if it's input, output, or in-out. And um, in this case, this procedure could actually effectively have four return values, which are D, E, F, and G, because it has four output or in-out uh, arguments. And so when you want your output to be fed to a specific signal, that's what uh, you connect it to that argument of the procedure. You can see that the arguments of procedures are actually kind of closer to uh, ports in, in component instantiations than they are to arguments in, uh, in functions. And procedures actually form kind of a bridge between, uh, between uh, entities and functions in a way. So I'll discuss a couple of uh, miscellaneous issues, one of which actually relates to both functions and procedures, and the other is more related to functions. The first issue I would like to discuss is overloading, and overloading is extremely useful. It's something that you should know about. Overloading, uh, which is really common in programming languages, can also be used in VHDL. All it means is that we are redefining a function or a procedure for the rest of this discussion about overloading. You are redefining a function multiple times. So the function is defined multiple times with the same name. The only difference has to be with the arguments. So you redefine the function multiple times with different argument lists. So you see here an example of overloading where we define the function once using two arguments and define it, redefine it again using three arguments. It's returning the same uh, type, which is integer in both, ca both cases, but it's accepting different arguments on both sides. So is this legal? This is perfectly legal and actually it's, it's kind of useful. So how does the compiler, how does the synthesizer, how do they figure out which one of these to use? When you call the function, they look at the uh, argument list that you are using. And if it has three arguments, then you are using the second definition. If it's using two arguments, then it's using the first definition. So it's pretty simple, actually, is all I'm saying. So um, can you guess what kind of overloading you cannot use? Like what is illegal to do? Um, if you overload a function by redefining it twice, and in both cases, the argument list is identical, but the body of the function is different, that's illegal because nobody knows what you are calling. So the condition on overloading is that the argument list has to be different. Now, the second example is actually a lot more interesting because it shows uh, cases where we actually do use overloading a lot. So the first case is perhaps interesting, but the second case is more uh, uh, practical. So in the second case, you will find that the number of arguments in the function is the same. It's just a single argument, but the difference is, is in the type of argument. So in the first uh, definition of the function, we are using an argument of type integer. And in the second, we are using an, uh, an argument of type standard logic vector. And this also affects the return value. So the type of the return value could, could differ between different overloadings. This is particularly useful because it allows you to redefine a function for multiple input types. 
So instead of using multiple names for uh, the same function, just to indicate that you are doing it for different types, you can use the same name. And when you call that function, uh, the compiler will figure out which one to call based on the type of the argument rather than the number of arguments. And you will find that um, this is how, for example, operators in VHDL uh, function. Operators in VHDL are definitely overloaded because you can say A plus B and A and B could be integers. And in that case, the operator, which is sort of kind of a special function, is going to return an integer and it's going to deal with two integers. Or C plus D and C plus D could both be uh, standard logic vectors and it knows that it, it's going to use the plus for the two different data types differently uh, because this is overloaded. So overloading is actually pretty useful when you are dealing with different data types, um, even if you have the same number of input arguments. The second thing I would like to discuss is predefined functions that come with uh, IEEE packages within the IEEE library. Uh, specifically, the packages I'm talking about are standard logic arith, which is standard logic arithmetic, and standard logic signed, and standard logic unsigned. So I'm particularly interested in uh, uh, type conversion functions because I have used them repeatedly in previous videos, and they are very useful. They're extremely useful, especially when you move on to writing uh, scalable uh, code that can um, that inherits generics and you start using more advanced coding techniques. So um, the conversion functions are just going to convert a type uh, into another type. And they are usually used to move between standard logic vectors and integers, because this is very often what we need to do. So the first function is conv integer, and it accepts a single uh, argument of standard logic vector type. So all it does is it takes a standard logic vector argument and it returns the integer equivalent of that, uh, of that bus. So if the bus is three bits long and uh, its content is 0 and 1, then this will return a value of 3. But what if the uh, bus has a content of 1, 0, 1? What if the argument is 1, 0, 1? What is this? Is this 5 or is this a negative number? where this is the sign bit. So we have to define if um, this is actually uh, signed or unsigned, which is why when you use conv integer or conv standard logic vector, which is the, uh, arg the uh, function I'll describe next, you have to use it after defining either the uh, standard logic signed or standard logic unsigned uh, packages. These two packages will redefine the function for signed or unsigned numbers. So we are actually doing overloading here, but these are mutually exclusive. So you cannot declare both packages because they need to know if the numbers are signed or unsigned. They cannot be both. So you have to use only one of these two packages in, a, in, a, in any single design. So an example of a location where we used conv integer, for example, was in memories where we needed to uh, extract the content of memory during a read operation. And the contents of memory were stored in an array. And uh, like, for example, if we need to access the uh, nth element of the RAM content array, we have to use an integer argument n uh, for this array. But this actually comes as the address bus of the, uh, of the uh, memory. And so we have to take that address bus and convert it somehow into an integer number. And so we use conv integer and use that as the argument for the array. So that's a case where you have to use this. Now, again, this is a very safe use of functions because uh, this reduces into a number at synthesis time, and so it's not going to cost any hardware. Uh, type conversion uh, functions are generally very safe to use, and you should use them uh, as much as possible because they actually make reading the code a lot easier. So the second uh, conversion function we use is, we often use is conv standard logic vector, which is the opposite of conv integer. So it converts an integer number into a standard logic vector. But in this case, 
So its return type is basically a uh, standard logic vector type. But in this case, um, we have to have two arguments for this function. Um, the two arguments are the integer value we uh, are converting and another integer, which is the size of the bus we convert to. So we return something that is stored in a bus that is uh, size bus wide. So for example, if, if this integer value is two and the size of the bus is uh, three, then we return zero, one, zero. If the size of the bus is four, then we return zero, zero, one, zero. And so obviously we need to know the type of the bus. Conv, uh, the size of the bus. Conv standard logic vector like conv integer has to be defined either for signed numbers or for unsigned numbers. So it has to be associated with either of the two libraries. The last uh, conversion uh, functions I want to discuss are uh, kind of tightly associated and they are con convert signed and convert unsigned. And these are used to convert numbers, uh, specifically standard logic vector types, although they can actually um, they can actually uh, accept integer numbers, but the interesting use is is with standard logic vector types. So they can convert between unsigned and signed types, and they are their use is actually kind of confusing because they are used when you mix signed and unsigned numbers in the same operation. And I generally advise against doing that. I, th I think you should always keep a single design using only signed or unsigned numbers. If you aren't sure if you should be using signed or unsigned numbers, the safer bet is to use signed numbers because you don't actually know if you will have negative values.